Hyperpower. Capitalism has made it this way. Old-fashioned fascism will take it away. It's uh, Marilyn Manson from a song called Beautiful People. Fascism should more appropriately be called corporatism because it is the merger of the state and corporate power. Benito Mussolini. At the end of the 20th century, America stood without equal. Her state capitalistic system defeated all of their political systems. Now the American elite decided to study on how they can secure their power for the next 100 years. That think tank was called a project for a new American century and was founded in 1997. It was headed by mainly military and energy interests. You may recognize some of these names, Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, William Crystal, Steve Forbes, William Bennett, Scooter Libby, Jeb Bush, Dan Quayle, John Bolton, Paul Wolfowitz, Norman Poderitz, Elliot Abrams, Richard Armitage, and Robert Zolick. They sought full-spectrum dominance. They wanted massive buildup of military spending, militarization of space and cyberspace, projection of missile defenses, quote-unquote defenses, safer nuclear weapons, small tactical nukes, a homeland defense department, a high-tech unmanned military, improved first strike capabilities, project military bases closer to energy producers in the Persian Gulf and the Caspian Sea, and push aside the UN in favor of American dominance. Donald Rumsfeld's own notes from PNAC were quote-unquote to go massive, which translated into shock and awe, and to sweep it all up, things related and not, which is a perfect example of Iraq and 9-11 since they had nothing to do with each other. The conclusion of all this was they could not reach their goal unless, absent some catastrophic catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor, that was on page 63, meaning that they had all these grandiose plans, but they could not have the political will to do that unless a new Pearl Harbor happened. And this was written September 2000. One year later, we all know what happened. Never waste a good crisis. Hillary Clinton. The first level I've identified is the kind of the, the fool you. These are disgraced politicians who are meant to give people hope and eventually just they're thrown to the wolves. But also the political commentators such as uh, you know Glenn Beck and Rush Limbaugh and Hannity who basically voice one side of the two puppet system. The next step up is the we distract you class. These are basically in two separate groups. We have the technology guys who work towards you know, providing the technological initiative and, and the power to give the government all the tools necessary to control its citizens and, and observe the citizens. Um, you know, this could be everybody from Bill Gates all the way to the guys from Google and that little kid from Facebook. Uh, but there's also the very powerful media people in, in Hollywood, you know, Spielberg and Katzenberger and Geffen and Eisner and uh, Rupert Murdoch. These guys all control and run the media propaganda arm. Then there's the the justification class. The, these are the people that come out and apologize and make things nice and and kind of smooth over all the bad things that go on. And they're the spokespeople and the you know the the ones that kind of plead the people's case. The next is the controlling class. Now this is a little bit more muscle and power structure. This could be anybody from the CIA chief to uh, the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, FBI, Homeland Security. Basically these are the political enforcers of, uh, of the government. Probably the, where most people see the end of the power structure, and this is the delude. And this is where people put most emotional energy in, possibly the most amount of money to finance. And this is that whole puppet game of this uh, right-left paradigm that's uh, paraded in front of the American citizens. So we get all excited when our side wins and the other side loses. And it's, uh, it only serves as a distraction and never offers us any real choices. I got all excited about Bush. Other people got all excited about Obama. And, and at the end of the day, they're both puppets to the same powerful people. This is a real powerful class. Uh, this is the Wall Street class. These are the guys on the ground basically collecting the money that the politicians, you know, make they make the rules, make the pass the laws, and this is the real money behind the power. But they would be completely worthless if they didn't have the guys who rigged the game, the central bankers, the treasury secretaries, the guys that set the policy that allow the, the Wall Street criminals to get away with all the all this stuff. 
the deregulation that it takes down the, the protections against consumers so they're able to run rampant with the system. And then when it all falls apart, they're there to pick up the pieces and say, okay, we learned our lesson. And they're actually even below a, a thicker group of uh, people. These are the top-level managers. These are the people who set out the big policy decisions. These are the ones that manage every aspect between the banking, the military, the, the media. These are the ones that set out the broad picture. And, of course, the, the real power, which is the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers. These are the ones that own the central banks. These are the guys that hire the, the Henry Kissingers of the world and the big new Brzezinski's and, and set forth the policies. And they're the ones that are the overarching power behind everything. Uh, the Rothschilds are all pictured here on the left. Um, I kind of put uh, Queen Elizabeth in their camp because uh, the Rothschilds do own uh, the Bank of England and are most likely own her. The Rothschilds also uh, finance and control the Vatican's bank account, uh, which is a little known fact. And I put David Rockefeller with the House of Saud because as the American policy, those two families have been the most uh, powerful influences probably over the last 60 years. But I also put two other people on here, uh, President Hu Jintao and uh, Vladimir Putin, because there's a third block that's arising against these two powerful families. I call them the anti-hegemon, uh, whereas the United States is the, the all-powerful power uh, on the world spectrum. China, Russia, Iran, Venezuela, basically all these countries that have not benefited from the current political spectrum are now all sort of uniting uh, with the main effort of uh, throwing off the American influence. They don't necessarily have ideological backing to hold them together. Their main focus and their main uh, driving force to hold them together is just being the anti-American camp. This could also be broken into different factions. You have social power at the bottom, political power in the middle, financial or economic power in the middle, and then absolute power at the top. And depending on where we are in history, each one of the bottom three categories could be more powerful at one point or another. Like if you looked at social power in the 60s and 70s, that was probably more powerful than the financial or political powers. But if you went back to the you know, 40s and 50s, the political power, the Washington uh, bureaucracies were much more powerful than any social power that was available or financial power. And if you looked at the 80s and 90s and 2000s, the financial power dominated all these other forces, but always at the top is the absolute power. The guys that own the central banks set the policy. Most of the really rich families have made their money off of immoral or illegal business practices before they became illegitimate. They are monopoly men. They are not interested in free trade or competition. Some of them were drug or liquor runners, war profiteers, insider traders.